Thank you very much. Well, it, it's great to be here at the Global Family Reunion, and hello to everyone watching via live stream. So I love family history. I know I don't look like the typical genealogist, right? I, I started when I was very, very young. And one thing that I love to do is actually trace the family history of sort of celebrities and see if we can figure out exactly how they are cousins. And I also love the fact that on Genealogy Roadshow on PBS, we get to trace the relatives of everyday Americans just like you and I who walk, walk in the, the doors of the show and want to figure out a mystery about their family. And so for the next 20 or 30 minutes, we're gonna talk about a little bit about how to do some celebrity research, but I also thought I'd share a couple of stories with you about some of the unique things that I found uh, crawling through a celebrity's ancestry. They don't allow you to see all of it on TV because of course they have to edit it down, but th there's some interesting stuff there. But to start off talking about Hollywood and family history, you know, I love the fact that family history and genealogy is really, really everywhere. So behind me, you will see a illustration of a pedigree chart. Uh, that's what we would, in family history, would call it. Uh, to my little sister when this movie came out, who was seven years old, this was a fun thing to color. So when the Tigger movie came out, if you remember about 10, 15 years ago, the Tigger movie is all about genealogy and family history. Right, Tigger goes on a quest to figure out all of his Tiggers. And to me, it's the best part that you could ever use if you want to get an eight-year-old involved in family history because Tigger has his own family tree. But actually, Hollywood has a really, really long connection with family history and genealogy. Walt Disney himself made sure that nearly every major character in his universe has a family tree published somewhere. In 1972, the Disney Corporation actually produced the giant Walt Disney World book, which gave nearly every character an entire pedigree traced all throughout the world. So Hollywood certainly has some interest in family history. Both fictional characters, such as The Simpsons, People spend a lot of time working on family trees from things like The Simpsons Family. I discovered on an online website a couple of months ago that someone has connected my public tree to the Harry Potter family tree. <laughs> Apparently, I'm Harry Potter's ninth cousin, you know, two times removed. I'm not exactly sure about the accuracy of that connection. But, you know, it's all right. Fact and fiction can certainly blend a, a little bit when it comes to family history and, and genealogy. But Hollywood actually has a long history of casting family history as a main plot line in a lot of films. Even James Bond himself at one point visited the College of Arms to work with the genealogist there to solve a particular case. There's a movie that came out in 1997 called The Matchmaker. And the subject of this movie is a politician and his assistant who is sent to Ireland to uncover this particular politician's Irish roots to help to make him more likable to the Irish American community. Now, of course, while in Ireland, she falls in love, not with the genealogist, but she falls in love in Ireland and discovers what an amazing thing family history can be for others. And we see family history everywhere, not just on shows like Who Do You Think You Are and Genealogy Roadshow. Criminal Minds had an amazing episode in 2013 where they actually went to Salt Lake City, Utah, and they discovered that the person who was committing all of the crimes was doing it based upon some old 16th or 17th century Salem witch-ish thing, and he was connecting it all via family history and genealogy. So maybe a reason you wouldn't necessarily want to do a family history. But you will see that family history really is everywhere within Hollywood and TV, not just on shows like Who Do You Think You Are? And one of the most amazing things that I get to do at Find My Past and every day is I always get to figure out how people are related. So when the royal baby was born a couple of years ago, we decided that we would figure out what is the closest English sort of American celebrity's child, right? What's the closest celebrity baby to the royal baby? And it surprised us all when it was Hillary Duff's daughter, who's about their 15th or 16th cousin. But everyone showed up on this list, everyone from Celine Dion to Beyonce, you know, everyone has some sort of a relationship to Hollywood, whether they want to claim it or not. In, in another life, you know, a couple of years ago, one of Find My Past partners, the New England Historic Genealogical Society, was able to give Ellen DeGeneres an invitation to the royal wedding through a series of her cousins as we sort of linked through the different Hollywood celebrities. I don't think that Ellen ever actually got her invitation, but she certainly met a lot of potential families and, and cousins. And, and this is why we see shows like Who Do You Think You Are that take off and look at the ancestry of a particular celebrity 
but we also see some other elements of family history come to life. HBO had a wonderful series called The Family Tree, which featured a website somewhat similar to Find My Past in Name uh, that was a, a bit of a satire, but it was a fun look at family history from a fictional standpoint. And then, of course, there is Geneal Genealogy Roadshow, which, uh, as many of you have probably seen, I, I like it. I will say I like it the best, and mainly because I get to work on anybody and everybody that comes in with a story. And right now, I'm in the process of looking through more than 10,000 stories that have been submitted to Genealogy Roadshow. And let me tell you, there are some amazing stories out there in, in America. I'm always amazed at the things that people have in their background or the questions that they ask. But how does this all come together? How do you work to connect to a celebrity or to a larger story? It takes a lot of work, and there's more thought that goes into it than just necessarily doing the family history research. You have to figure out how to tell someone that story. So this is us setting up for a shoot with Ashley Judd, where my role was literally to sit and connect Ashley Judd from Virginia in the sort of 1900s back to the Mayflower, and they were going to do it in sort of one quick three-minute segment. So they used a pedigree chart to do it. And it took an, an awful lot of work. You know, so I've, I've done things like connect Ashley Judd back to the Mayflower. We found Sarah Jessica Parker's Salem Rich trial roots. And then I had to tell Rob Lowe that his ancestor was, in fact, not a soldier with George Washington. He was a soldier who fought against George Washington as a Hessian soldier. That was a very interesting three or four hours of my lifetime because we got to a certain point looking through the tax list, and he sort of looked at me and said, this guy's German, isn't he? He's Hessian. And I said, uh, I'm not supposed to reveal that because that's what's going to happen next. But he could be. That's a very good observation. In the end, we were able to qualify his ancestor for membership in the Sons of the American Revolution because his ancestor paid a tax to support the revolutionary cause after he had gotten out of being a prisoner of war. But connections like this happen all the time in celebrity genealogy. When I was looking in Sarah Jessica Parker's roots, I discovered a man in her ancestry named Thomas Trowbridge. And I was quite excited to see Thomas Trowbridge because Thomas Trowbridge is also an ancestor of Cindy Crawford. So this makes Sarah Jessica Parker and Cindy Crawford cousins. However, they also share another very, very interesting cousin, and that's me. <laughs> Perhaps not the most glamorous of the three on the screen. And I take selfies in cemeteries all the time because I, I'm, I'm trying to get a thing started. No one, it never trends, but you know, if someone doesn't start it, it, it doesn't go anywhere. But Thomas Trowbridge actually has millions of descendants all over the country, so there's probably Trowbridge descendants in this room today or watching via the live stream because that's what happens when you start to look into the family tree of, of anybody. Celebrities are just like everybody else when it comes to their family history. They all have a tree that can get very, very broad and find a, a lot of interesting connections. So if you look at this, one thing that I love about family history is I always say that it's perpetual employment because you'll always have two more people to find. Right? You find someone, but then you've got to find their parents and then their great-grandparents, and literally you could spend a lifetime building up a tree, and many of us do. Once you go back far enough, if you sort of think of it like a pyramid, you get to lots of great-great-great-grandparents. In fact, by the 20th generation, you'll have more than one million ancestors out there. So you can see the likelihood that a celebrity like Sarah Jessica Parker and yourself could eventually find some common link between those million ancestors that are out there. And then you compare this with the population of the world, and it almost goes in the opposite direction. So while our family trees grow and grow and grow, the family trees of sort of the world and its population actually shrink, so it becomes a diamond. It, it decreases over time. So right now, there's more than 7 billion people in the planet. You know, 1950, there was 2.4 billion, and it literally decreases over time. And when you go back to a year like the year 1400, there's only estimated to be 600,000 people on the world. Well, consider that we were talking about having millions of ancestors back 20 generations. We call it pedigree collapse, right? I, someday I'm going to invent a video game called Pedigree Collapse, where the pedigrees all come crashing down on people because that's what happens once you get back far enough on anyone's family tree. There are not enough people alive on the earth to account for you not having some duplicate ancestors, which makes us all really cousins, even the celebrities, whether or not we want to claim them. I'm quite happy to claim Sarah Jessica Parker. I'm not too sure about Justin Bieber and their Kardashians. I haven't decided on that yet. But when you look at someone like Thomas Trowbridge, so here's a, a guy who connected me with a couple of other celebrities. 
Well, he has a very, very famous ancestor uh, who's actually Hugh, a king of the Franks in 900 AD. Now imagine if you go back even further and look at someone like you know, this king in 900 AD, this king has a lot, a lot of famous descendants. So Beyonce counts sort of Hugh as an ancestor, Cindy Crawford, a Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Queen Elizabeth I, Princess Diana, Sarah Jessica Parker, and of course me with the cemetery selfie. We are all then very, very distant cousins. I'm not expecting an invitation to anything, but you never know, it could happen, right? Maybe I'll, I'll bump into Secretary Clinton on the street one day and say, hi, I'm your cousin, and by the way, so are all of these four or five people standing next to us, but that's the way family history is. So how do you, how do you trace a celebrity's roots? The same way you trace your own. You really start with those basic core records, that core data, things like census, birth, marriage, and death, registrations, immigration records, you start with the same sources that you would use to search in your own ancestry. Now, a lot of celebrity pedigrees have been put online, and I always recommend that you work to find an online pedigree and then make sure you verify it, because it's easy to put you know, a couple of things online, but make sure you verify it just to make sure. And you can find celebrities in records like the US Census. So the 1940 census, when it was released a couple of years ago, was great because the first thing I did is, I didn't look for my own family, I went to look for the families of celebrities because I knew my family in 1940. But I found Judy Garland, for example, even though this is not her birth name, so sometimes you have to look under a stage name or a performer's name because you never know exactly how they're going to be listed. Even individuals who haven't necessarily yet become famous are still found in these records. So the Reverend Martin Luther King is found in the 1940 census with his parents. And from that, you could start tracing back a couple of generations. Here is a girl by the name of Norma Jean Baker. Anybody know who that is? <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. The census actually lists her as a ward, even though she's living with her parents, which follows a lot of her tragic upbringing that we know about. So you find clues and, and tricks like this all through the records. Because I'm such a fan of Walt Disney, because of all those early pedigrees he put together, I had to find Walt Disney and his family in the 1940 census. And I also found someone by the name of Anna Bullock, who we know today as Tina Turner. So again, anybody and everybody appears in the census, even before they were famous. And you can then use those records and trace their family back sort of year by year by year. You can also use birth records. There's a lot of birth records that are online that will help give you information about someone's parents and maiden names. You can use collections like the draft cards from the First World War. So literally every young man between a certain age range was required to fill out a draft card. So if they're living in the United States and they're between the ages of 18 and sort of 30 or 35, you should be able to find a draft card that includes a description of how tall they were, what color their eyes were, sort of where they were born, what their citizenship was like, where they were working, what family they had to support, and if you're lucky, in most cases you'll end up being lucky, this cards actually have the signature of your ancestor. So it was one of the first times I ever saw the signature of my great-great-grandfather was actually on his draft card. But you'll find records of celebrities in, again, those very, very common records that we might not even think exist, but they're out there. Things like passenger lists, so folks who came through Ellis Island or really any port in the US, there's a passenger list out there and you can see celebrities arriving. If you're researching someone like Walt Disney, for example, who made a lot of trips in various places, you can actually see them traveling from one place to another, listing their relatives in one country or back in the actual US. So there's a lot of things that you can find, a lot of things that you can do when you start looking into a celebrity's family tree. Now, some key ideas and some key locations, so some hints, if you're really, really into getting connected into Hollywood, a couple of things you can look at. L location really does become key in this. Typically, the smaller the geographic area the family lived in, the more likelihood it is that you'll find a cousin. So, for example, I find a lot of connections in places like New England, because in the 1600s, 1700s, there weren't a lot of options for other families to marry into. So we see pedigree collapse happen quite quickly. Nowadays, if you look in major cities with populations of sort of millions, you're less likely to find a very, very immediate connection, but you never know. Family history always surprises you. It's one reason why I love it, is that you think you have something set and the next day you'll find something completely unexpected. Look in online family trees and make sure that you're keeping your own family tree online so that you can actually start to trace and document each of those generations. 
it can be really, really difficult sometimes to keep everything on paper. So make sure you're using an online family tree to at least mark you know, different ancestors that you might have, and then you can look for connections that you might have between a celebrity. There are also great resources that have been published about families. Now, just because it's in print doesn't mean it's always true, but because it's in print, it gives us a great lead to start researching our family history. A lot of families who've been in the United States for a long time, so sort of back to the 1600s, have a compiled genealogy that's been written about all the descendants of that immigrant ancestor. Now, the myth we always hear is, right, he was one of three brothers who came, to, one went to New England, one to Virginia, and one to Barbados. Sometimes that's true, most of the time it's not, that's okay. But these genealogies will outline several generations of descendants of a particular individual. So I found the link to Thomas Trowbridge between Cindy Crawford and Sarah Jessica Parker in a book about the Trowbridge family and all of their descendants, and that's how I was able to find all of those common lines. So look out for resources like this. There's a lot online at different websites. Macavo has a lot of some of these compiled genealogies that will literally give you in book form an entire family tree very, very quickly. So we have a, about two or three minutes left, and I just want to share a few final words with you. The first is, it's important to verify a, lo a lot of this information. Now, genealogy and family history is incredibly fun, and I never want to tell somebody that it's boring and it takes forever, because you know what? It can be fun and exciting, and you can go online and use an app and find a connection in five minutes, but it's important to verify and make sure that you have the right connection. And the process of verifying, I think, is a fun process of discovery because it's where you find things like the signatures of an ancestor. I found out that the Trowbridge family actually owned a tavern, and so in, in England, I've been over and stood in front of the tavern the Trowbridge family owned and, and had another selfie taken there. I wasn't able to find a cemetery, so I had to substitute it for the Trowbridge Tavern. We shouldn't expect to become BFFs. Um, I get really, really odd mail sometimes for my cousins, so the idea being that because you worked with Rob Lowe for five minutes on a TV show three years ago, you know him personally. So here's all of my Lowe family pedigrees, and please pass this on and see if you can find a connection. Don't necessarily expect to become BFFs, but you never know. And make sure that you're having fun and join the family. You know, family history really is something that connects a lot of individuals together. And sometimes it isn't necessarily about the number of ancestors that you find. Sometimes it's about finding that one individual or that one really, really neat or that one really cool story. One thing that I loved about uh, Sarah Jessica Parker was when we went through her family tree, she was related to the Salem witch and it was the Elwell family, and she loved the names. Uh, we came across an ancestor whose name was Jabez Elwell, and she sort of held up her hand and she went, Jabez, Jabez, I love that name, Jabez. And it's clear in her family that the names were important because she named the next children she had after her ancestor. She took names that we had discovered together and made sure that they were kept alive in the family. And that was incredibly touching and not necessarily unique because when we worked with Kelly Clarkson just a couple of years ago, she found an ancestor by the name of Isaiah Rose who had served in the Civil War and had come back and served in the state legislature. And she named her daughter the name Rose. So she wanted to keep the Rose family alive in things that she uncovered about her family tree. So even from Hollywood to you and I who are sitting in this room today, family history really touches everyone. It's what makes it fun and exciting. And that there is without a doubt somewhere back in your tree you can find some sort of a connection to a celebrity. It might be second cousins, it might be first cousins, and it might be 20th or 50th cousins, but there's got to be a connection back there somewhere. And that's just a little bit about what I do and what I hope all of you will start doing with family history. Hollywood and the family tree. I'm happy to take questions sort of at the end off to the side so we can get ready for our next talk. Thank you very much.